What's up guys, welcome back to Natty Garage. In today's video, uh, we have something sitting back there that looks pretty much complete. And uh, I know there should have been a lot of other episodes that showed you guys on how we actually got to this point. But because we actually got to this point, that wasn't the hardest part. The hardest part is the next part, which might be an uh, engine swap. We'll talk about that hopefully in a little bit. This bad boy, we ended up picking up for an absolute killer deal. You guys already know about that for, I think we I think we mentioned it, right? $15,000, which is kind of crazy for an M4CS. Uh, but the cost that we're into it currently, uh, might as well disclose that right now. We're currently into about thirty-two or $33,000, which is quite a lot of money. That's us obviously getting really good deals on a lot of these CS parts. So let's just go ahead and just show you guys how the car is fully put together at this point. So come around over here. Let's go ahead and just go a little bit low and show you guys the panel gaps real quick. That honestly is as best as it's gonna get considering the damage that it was in. Honestly, I'm very, very, very impressed. Now, I obviously could not get these kind of results on my own. I had my boys over at Forum Builds actually assemble this whole front end of this car because I didn't have the confidence to make it look this good. Just a few little things that obviously could be addressed and we will address them because this is a CS. We want to make it absolutely perfect. Not up on the concern list after we found out a major issue with this engine. As you guys can see, we have the original CS hood on there in Alpine white. We actually did not even touch the paint on this. So this is factory paint on here. The front bumper, we ended up repainting it even though it was Alpine white just because we want it to be absolutely perfect. It had some blemishes it had a few like rock chips things like that we got the cs front lip on there the headlights are fully coated in those are all working perfect if i click that look at those oh Dude, looks looks so good. What the heck? those headlights look so good i love how it has a, the blacked out housing from factory so that just looks fantastic yeah i mean it could have been lasers the laser lights whatever they're called but still fantastic to the interior guys this is obviously where this car pretty much shines uh we have the full cs interior fully assembled Beautiful door card, CS door seals. Just check out this interior, bro. It's just absolutely, it's yeah. crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I can't honestly believe my brother actually copped this thing. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna buy one day <laughs> off of him. We'll see, we'll see. But yeah, the car is fully assembled. So the headliner is fully put together, the dashboard. We actually ended up retrofitting a heads up display and the windshield, as you guys can see, we actually ended up replacing it as well with a heads up display retrofit uh, windshield. So we did the proper windshield, proper dashboard, proper actual OEM parts to get this thing at OEM heads up display retrofit, which is pretty sick. Everything's fully assembled in the interior. There is no damage. This video is more of just kind of like an update of what's going on with this car. I didn't really, I, I, we filmed a bunch of stuff on this car. This video is more of just an update because a lot of you guys are asking like, dude, what happened to the M4CS videos? I kind of honestly scrapped all the content that we filmed. Just, it didn't work out. We got really depressed. <laughs> We're feeling a little bit better because we think it is, it could be fixed. We'll get into that again in a little bit. Engine bay, beautiful hood. As you see the carbon fiber hood, everything is fully reassembled. This all actually got repainted and all got replaced. So that is super nice, all up to factory on um, both sides. So over at Forum Builds, they ended up replacing both sides, painting both sides before actually reassembling everything on this car, adjusting absolutely everything. Everything you guys can see in the engine bay is actually exactly how it was from the factory at this point. You know what guys, we're actually just gonna go ahead and start it up. I mean, the, the fact that we weren't able to show you the entire assembly process, we might as well show you guys this thing actually running and driving. So let's just go ahead and start her up and uh, move it forward so we have to show you guys the rear end of this car and actually give you guys a better angle of what's going on exactly. You know what, actually better yet, I, I'm gonna have my brother move it because this is his car. You're right, you need to get in your you're car, right. bro, I'm, enjoy it. I'm the driver. Yeah, you're the driver. He's the driver. Just, just don't, the RPMs need to stay kind of low, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just, uh, just turn it on and let it- Yeah, let just, it roll. <laughs> just roll it. It looks phenomenal though, I will say. So coming around to the rear guys, I don't know if you guys remember, but it actually was impacted this side as well. This rear bumper, we actually ended up reusing a little bit of an issue right here. And that's mainly because there's actually a lot of Bondo that was put on this bumper. It is plastic. We are trying to be transparent with our build. So yeah, fortunately we did end up putting a lot of Bondo. It is a bumper. Eventually when we end up getting another white Alpine white bumper, we're just gonna swap the bumpers over and that's gonna fix that issue. Not a big deal. Finding a bumper at the time that it was at the shop, we just wanted it to get out of the shop just because of the news that we heard with the engine. We were in it too much money and we were afraid that it was gonna be absolutely catastrophic to get this thing back on the road. Bumpers on the car, everything's fully assembled. All the, the framework back here was fully repaired. The gaps look absolutely amazing. Back to factory. Honestly, shout out to the boys over at Forum Builds for helping us assemble this car because they really, really made this car look proper. That's like, this thing's just absolutely gorgeous. So the issue we ended up finding out with this car was honestly before we even assembled the front end, was honestly even before the car got painted, was honestly even before like everything honestly got reassembled when it was taken over to their shop. Once it was taken over there, he started reassembling the engine, started putting all the hoses and everything back. So you're just getting it running and driving so you can get it to get the frame shot properly, take it to paint properly, take it to the alignment properly, just do all that stuff properly. But unfortunately we found out the harmonic balancer, which is basically with the crank pulley and all that kind of stuff, slap a video right over here for you guys. Basically when the 
car is idling, that pulley is wobbling way too much. Now, there could be a little bit of wobble, and that's, I think, the job of the harmonic balancer is to kind of just balance that kind of wobble, but unfortunately, it is just really, really, really bad to the point to where we believed it could be a bent crank on the engine, which eventually would wear out the bearings, which eventually would pretty much blow up this engine. After doing a little bit more research, we found out that there's no way that the crank is actually bent because this thing's idling perfectly. If you give it a few reds, it runs perfectly. There's no check engine light. There's no timing codes. There's no nothing. So this engine, honestly, is pretty good, but that kind of leaves us with the question of what is exactly going on with that crank pulley. So after calling up a few shops and kind of explaining to him the situation after sending him that video that I showed you guys just a little bit ago, basically they all came back with the, uh, yo, is the car running? Is there a check engine light? You know, is it like misfiring? Is it like, does it, is the RPMs all crazy? I said, honestly, it runs perfectly. There's literally no other issues other than the belt kind of squealing because the belt's kind of getting flexed all over the place. They were honestly all coming back with the same thing, talking about how basically the crank hubs on these cars, they fail, right? And that's mainly because of the bolt that actually holds the crank pulley to the crank itself crank hub at least in this case well, I guess the the bolt holds the uh, crank hub to the crank and that bolt over time under tension under load and just over time wear and tear that bolt eventually just pretty much stretches out as soon as it stretches out it is no longer torqued properly and the crank spins out and throws off timing and blows up the engine throws off timing engine will shut off yada 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 very bad absolutely terrible we do believe that the bolt itself from the crank hub ended up getting damaged either bent downwards or upwards from the accident thus actually bending the crank hub a little bit or just moving it kind of a little off to the point to where when the actual crank pulley is spinning, it's it's wobbling just ever so slightly. Like if you turn it by hand, you can't really notice, but when it's actually idling under, you know, RPM load and heavy load, then you can actually kind of see that belt kind of spinning everywhere. So kind of to wrap that all up in a neat bow, crank bolt, what we're assuming, crank bolts a little bent, causing the crank to be a little bent. And after, you know, a lot of spins with the RPMs, a little bit of wobbleness. That's what we're assuming. So we're hoping that the infamous crank hub issue on this car, which means that they actually provide a lot of repairs for that kind of situation. They offer the four pin crank at SSR Performance. That's what we're gonna go ahead and opt with. I did it with my F80, I did it with my F82. We're gonna do it with the CS. So we're just gonna go ahead and just replace that crank hub and the bolt with the four pin crank. So that is like a big ticket item maintenance getting done on this car, but at the same time, potentially fixing our crank wobble on this engine. Now there is a slight chance. So we end up replacing this crank hub, bolting it all up together, and it's still wobbling, which means that the actual crank itself is bent, which means that this engine is pretty much close to being done. Because if that crank is actually even moving ever so slightly, that rod bearing is just degrading itself from the inside and just gonna, we'll all be depressed. <laughs> so that being said, hopefully we take the car there, you know, dump a couple grand and uh, replace that crank hub. Hopefully that fixes our issues and hopefully my brother will finally be able to start enjoying his car. This thing's been in the shop for about six months now, getting parts, getting everything situated, back and forth to shops. It's honestly been an absolute mission, but that's what happens when you get a car for a good deal. It's always a catch with everything. The car does run. As you guys can see, we brought it up here. It does drive. I just don't want to risk driving it any higher than 1,000 or 2,000 RPMs until we get that crank hub situated because if it spins, again, we throw off timing and it would be a whole lot more than a crank hub that's needed to fix this car. So at this point, guys, uh, we'll go ahead and check back with you guys in a few days once we actually get the call from the mechanic saying, hey, you can go ahead and bring in the car. So that's what we're all waiting on. So we'll see you guys in either two or three or potentially four days. And two weeks later, guys, we are back in the exact same spot. So that's why the M4 update has been absolutely terrible lately, guys, because honestly, getting someone to do this crank hub fix for us has been honestly, unless we're rich, kind of insane because honestly getting a crank hub done we called some local shops i do i mean obviously i prefer ssr performance down in la but that's like an eight hour drive and i have to tow this right now back when i just used to do youtube videos i was perfectly fine but now that we actually run natty auto parts i can't dip out eight hours on a personal venture eight hours one way probably spend the night and then eight hours back so like yeah. three days realistically huh it's like three days yeah like we we and plus if i'm down there i'm not gonna go there oh yeah because they have to do the job they have there to do too. the job too it's and not then like you're just going down to tow the car back so it's just a long process for us. If they were local, like <laughs> we wouldn't have a problem. I'm gonna be straight up with y'all. Unfortunately, we did call up some shops around us, and the prices were just astronomical. Like I think it was like five thousand dollars, a little more than that in some other places. And five thousand dollars, and the, the the fix that we want is basically just to replace the bolt, just make sure that it doesn't throw off time. It just seems 
absurd, to be honest, because we could just get a whole nother engine <laughs> for about 5,000 bucks out of a parts car and slap it in there. But this is a perfectly good engine. We don't want to scrap this engine. Yeah, I guess you can say we're in a little bit of a stump. I, 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 we, me and Jonathan just figured that we're just going to go ahead and throw out this video right now, but just so you guys get the update. A lot of you guys have been asking about what's going on with the M4CS. Yes, it looks beautiful. It drives forward, left and right, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, I, my brother is so excited for this car, guys. I, I don't even want to, you know, drag this on any longer than it is. I know this video is mostly just talking, but you guys wanted an update. This is an update, unfortunately. Uh, we're just waiting for someone to do that crank up. But I guess if you guys are here to see the whole rebuilding journey, the car is 100% put together. It looks great, by the way. It's phenomenal. I, I gaps. Honestly, yeah, the gaps. So that's foreign builds. He actually works on DDE's cars and a couple other big other YouTubers' cars. They do amazing work, and I knew that. A car like this you know my garage hands weren't gonna we're gonna make this thing look beautiful <laughs> he knows what he's doing they deal with lamborghinis mclarens and a bunch of other crazy stuff so anyways this car looks absolutely amazing shout out to them for making it work there were a couple things that were like stressing me out they took care of it i guess the next update is when we actually get this thing running and driving my brother cannot wait i was gonna go ahead and conclude this video hopefully i'm gonna try to upload twice a week i know you guys want more videos so we're gonna try to upload hopefully this upcoming wednesday if you guys can just smash that like button if you guys want to see a video this wednesday that would mean the absolute world so without further ado guys i love y'all so much remember to stay humble, look at that, the old outro. I'll see y'all on the next one.